In this video, we're going to talk about grading criteria. We're going to go ahead and jump into our grading creation tools. We've already talked about grading criteria in the previous video, but we didn't go into depth. We're going to go ahead and dive into these grading criteria and talk about uh, how to modify existing ones and then also how to create a new one. So grading criteria are inside of this dropdown in the grading creation tools. When you create a new file inside Civil 3D, there's four that are available to you. They are grade to distance, grade to elevation, grade to relative elevation, and grade to surface. When you create a new one, you don't necessarily get any additional options available to you, but you can set your, your defaults so that your grading creation can go faster. So if you know you want to create grade to surface and you want your cuts and fills to all be two to one, you can set all of your criteria to those specific defaults. And then when you run through your grading creation, you can basically pick your feature line or your object that you want to build off of, pick the side that you want to go to, and then just hit enter a bunch of times until you're done because you know that you've already set up all your defaults. I generally just I don't create new ones. I just deal with what the command line prompts me to do when I'm dealing with my grade creation tools. But there's probably some efficiency to be found by creating some new ones if you wanted to. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to dive into the grading creation tools. I'm going to create a new one. And so what we have here, once you create a new one, what is different than when you're editing an existing one is that you have the choice of choosing what your target is going to be. So if I went and let's say I went to grade to surface and chose to edit the current selection. Uh, inside of edit current selection, target and projection are both locked out because this grading criteria was created by Civil 3D for the specific use of grading to surface. And so it doesn't want you to modify these two top options so that you don't have a grade to surface option available to you. So it locks out the target and projection. If you wanted to create a new grade to surface, and I said create new, now I can choose surface. And you can see target and projection are not locked out. And so I can choose between cut, fill, slope, cut, slope, and fill, slope. So you can have a cut only grade to surface instead of the one that's already created, which is a cut, fill, slope one. So that's where some of those efficiencies that we talked about could be gained, is say you knew that you only needed to do a cut slope you wouldn't have to deal with Civil 3D asking you about what your fill slope ratios are. So moving on from here, we're going to go ahead and walk through the different target methods uh, inside of the new grading criteria that we're creating. So the first option is surface. We have the projection method, which is cut and fill slope, cut slope or fill slope. Then we have the search order. So what does Civil 3D ask you first? It says, does it ask you for what you want your cut ratio to be or what do you, what do you want your fill ratio to be when which one comes first in the command line? Then we look at cut slope projections, uh, how we want to format them. Do we want them to be slope or gradient? And then what our auto prompt is from Civil 3D. In the previous video, I said that you can't you can't have a slope of zero to one. That is a true statement. However, if you choose a slope format of horizontal, it will give you an option to have a flat slope. It's just not as easy as going to grade and typing zero. So inside of this slope option in here, this is basically where you're setting your parameters of what you want your slope to be or what you want your gradient to be. And then moving on to fill slope, same thing. What format are you using for your fill slopes? Whether it's going to be slope or gradient, and then what that default option is going to be. And then now we're talking about our conflict resolution that we talked about in the previous video and how you want to handle that conflict resolution. I generally use the use average slope. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to elevation. So elevation, all the cut and fill slope information is the same and the conflict resolution is the same. What we've changed now is what elevation we're going to grade to. So this is a, speci a specific elevation, which generally you're probably not going to set up a grading criteria for every single elevation that you may want to grade to a specific elevation. So uh, I find that having one grade to elevation criteria is all that you need. And then when, Civil 3D, when you initiate that command, Civil 3D asks you the elevation and you fill it out. Then you have the option of, do you want to do cut fill slopes or just cut slopes or just fill slopes? Moving on to the relative elevation, we have now 
lost our cut and fill slope formats because we are assigning what we're going to do with this relative elevation. If we're going to go a positive, that's going to be a fill. If we're going to go a negative, that's going to be a cut. So it knows that we're basically going upwards or downwards at a specific slope. So we don't get an option for how we're going to cut or fill. So then we have the option of what our slope projection is and the format and what our default setting is going to be and then our interior corner overlap conflict resolution. Moving on from there, we have distance. So you have your distance object, you have your projection method, and then you have your format type and your default setting. So from these four methods, you can do all of your grading creation methods. The only one that's not in here is your infill, and that's because there's no criteria for infills. It's just basically finding the exterior edges of the grading group and filling in the hole.